everyone, I'm Jordan Van Dyna. I'm the uh, writer and director of It's a Wonderful Binge, uh, and I'm here with Matt Bowen, the genius composer. He claims he's the best composer <laughs> to ever live, and I don't disagree. Uh, Matt, you want to tell them where we are, what this thing is? Yeah, we're at Vandrika Studios. This is the Bar Fox Wurlitzer pipe organ, a legendary organ that was uh, around from the 1920s. Composer Nathan Barr brought it back to life. has its home now here at Bandrika Studios. Uh, we're using it for a couple of days for the score on the movie. And what other movies, because we pulled it because we were like, it had so many great, such great history. What uh, other movies was it used in? Starting in the 1920s, it was used on all the silent films, um, and which is why it has, uh, it has this whole... It has all the sound effects you would need because that needed to be done live, so you didn't have a sound effects person. This was your one and only stop. Hold on, I can open up the chamber. And then a lot of the studios started to drop their pipe organs, and this one's unique, uh, and Fox is unique in that they, they held on to theirs longer than the other studios. This was around when a lot of the studio pipe organs weren't, when the movie Home Alone came up. Um, and John Williams used this organ on Home Alone. Uh, I guess initially, uh, not quite as a joke, but like, oh, Home Alone, we should use that on an, our Christmas movie. Pause. Yeah, no, actually, yeah, we we should use it on our Christmas movie, yeah. like for real. I think the idea was that it sounds so wholesome and pure, just like pure Christmas. When you think Home Alone, you think of that sound, and juxtaposed against this movie, which is so R-rated and crude and over the top, that I think it uh, adds a whole new level of, of genius to the movie. You mentioned the juxtaposition. That is something that we talked about at length that we really liked about this idea in, in that the score does, for the most part, ignore the fact that it's an R-rated movie and it's so earnest and pure that if you were to hear it, hopefully, you know, if you were to hear the score standalone, you might think it was pulled from maybe not quite a Home Alone, but, but some... But Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2, yeah. for sure. Hello. We started playing with that idea and going in that direction and started putting in sketches up against scenes and it just started working, so we knew we were onto something. Yeah, and I think it's the seriousness that adds like 10 times the comedy to the scenes because it's a grandma doing coke or she's telling this crazy story and it's all these moments that are enriched so much by the sincerity of it. Where any time if we would play around with like, oh, this is like a comedy track or this is what you'd put on a, a sitcom or a, a traditional comedy movie, you're like, no, this isn't working because it's like silly with silly. But if you have silly with something really serious, then it's, then it's funny again. We found the right formula. We cracked it. People are going to be talking about us for generations after we're dead. Thank you. Every time I mention my death, I want to hear that. <laughs> Wait, there's gonna be something better for the death. Yeah. And then I die. This is Jordan going up, lifting up heaven. to movie heaven, where they'll accept me and binge three, four, and five will be playing on a loop. <laughs> 